poo. It's humbug still. I won't believe it. It came on through the heavy door and a spectre passed into the room before his eyes. Scrooge had often heard it said that Marley had no bowels, but he had never believed it until now. No, nor did he believe it even now. Though he looked at the phantom through and through and saw it standing before him, though he felt the chilling influence of its death-cold eyes and noticed the very texture of the folded kerchief bound about his head and chin, he was still incredulous. How now? What do you want with me? Much. Who are you? Ask me who I was. Huh. Who were you then? In life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. Can you... Can you sit down? I can. Do it, then. Scrooge asked the question because he didn't know whether a ghost so transparent might find himself in a condition to take a chair, and felt that, in the event of its being impossible, it might involve the necessity of an embarrassing explanation. But the ghost sat down on the opposite side of the fireplace, as if he were quite used to it. You don't believe in me? I don't. What evidence would you have of my reality beyond that of your senses? Mm, I don't know. Why do you doubt your senses? Because a little thing affects them. A slight disorder of the stomach makes them jits. You may be an undigested bit of beef, a blot of mustard, a crumb of cheese, a fragment of an underdone potato. There's more of gravy than of grave about you, whatever you are. Humbug, I tell you, humbug! But how much greater was his horror when, the phantom taking off the bandage round its head, as if it were too warm to wear indoors, its lower jaw dropped down upon its breast. Dreadful apparition! Why do you trouble me? Why do spirits walk the earth? Why do they come to me? It is required of every man that the spirit within him should walk abroad amongst his fellow men and travel far and wide. And if that spirit goes not forth in life, it is condemned to do so after death. It is doomed to wander through the world. Oh, woe is me! and witness what it cannot share, but might have shared on earth, and turn to happiness. I wear the chain I forged in life. I made it link by link and yard by yard. I girded it on of my own free will, and of my own free will I wore it. Would you know the weight and length of the strong coil you bear yourself? It was full as heavy and as long as this seven Christmas Eves ago. You have labored on it since. It is a ponderous chain. Jacob, speak comfort to me, Jacob. I have none to give. It comes from other regions, Ebenezer Scrooge. I cannot rest, I cannot stay, I cannot linger anywhere. My spirit never walked beyond our counting house. Mark me, in life my spirit never roved beyond the narrow limits of our money-changing hole. 
and weary journeys lie before me. Seven years dead, and, and traveling all the time. The whole time. No rest, no peace. Incessant torture of remorse. You travel fast. On the wings of the wind. You might have got over a great quantity of ground in seven years. Oh, captive bound and double ironed. Not to know that ages of incessant labor by immortal creatures for this earth must pass into eternity before the good of which it is susceptible is all developed. Not to know that any Christian spirit working kindly in its little sphere, whatever it may be, will find its mortal life too short for its vast means of usefulness. Not to know that no space of regret can make amends for one's life's opportunity misused. Yet such was I. Oh, such was I. But you were always a, a good man of business, Jacob. Business? Mankind was my business. The common welfare was my business. Charity, mercy, forbearance, and benevolence were all my business. The dealings of my trade were but a drop of water in the comprehensive ocean of my business. Hear me. My time is nearly gone. I will. But don't be hard upon me. <laughs> don't be flowery, Jacob. Pray. I am here tonight to warn you you have yet a chance and hope of escaping my fate. A chance and hope of my procuring, Ebenezer. You were always a good friend to me. Thank you. You will be haunted by three spirits. Is that the chance and hope you mentioned, Jacob? I, I think I'd rather not. Without their visits, you cannot hope to shun the path I tread. Expect the first Tomorrow night, when the bell tolls one. Expect the second on the next night, at the same hour. The third, upon the next night, when the last stroke of twelve has ceased to vibrate. Look to see me no more. And look that for your own sake, you remember what has passed between us. It walked backward from him, and at every step it took, the window raised itself a little, so that when the apparition reached it, it was wide open. Scrooge closed the window and examined the door by which the ghost had entered. It was double locked, as he had locked it with his own hands and the bolts were undisturbed. Scrooge tried to say, Humbug, but stopped at the first syllable. And being from the emotion he had undergone, or the fatigues of the day, or his glimpse of the invisible world, or the dull conversation of the ghost, or the lateness of the hour, much in need of repose, he went straight to bed, without undressing, and fell asleep on the instant. <laughs>